Hi everyone. So I'm just finishing up some time that I've spent with the Lord this evening and I'm challenged. I'm encouraged. Mostly challenged. Um, and so one of the things that I think about being in the situation where we there's a lot of panic, there's a lot of fear is, you know, we need a lot of encouragement. We also need a challenge to kind of, you know, transition from what we're going through right now and to kind of look beyond the situation and just kind of imagine with God how he might want to use this time. And so I just wanted to quickly share with you some of the things that God is showing me right now in my time with him. And so I'd like you to turn if in your Bibles, if you have them. If not, I can read it out loud to Exodus 15, uh, 22 through 27. And in this passage, the Israelites are in the desert. Um, they've already gone through the Red Sea. God has delivered them from Egypt. He has delivered them out of, I think, 400 years of captivity. And he is... He's shown himself to be a God that can be trusted. He's shown himself to be a God who can do miracles. He's proven himself to the people of Israel numerous times. And so you would think that by the time they get into the prom, they would get not the promised land, but when they get into the wilderness, you would think, okay, we've seen God do all these things. We can trust him now. But that's not what happens. And so here in uh, Exodus 15, verse 22, I'm going to read it to you guys. So then... Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all of his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Okay, so here we have several things going on. In the first part of the passage, we have... Traveling for three days in the desert without water, that's pretty intense because you know that scientists say that we can go without food for a long time, but we can't go without water. We really need water to, 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 to survive. And so, you know, they're grumbling. They're grumbling against Moses. Moses has been appointed their leader. He's the guy who, you know, got sent by God to lead them out of captivity. And the Israelites are just losing their minds. And so like many of you, we're losing our minds. We're like, we did not see this pandemic coming in the way that which we probably didn't take it seriously at first. You know, everything has shifted in the matter of days. And so we've been transitioned into this wilderness and we don't know what to do. We're trying, we're hoarding toilet paper. We're, you know, eating snacks, we're binging on Netflix and, you know, food, Netflix, toilet paper, those are all great things to spend your time with. And, but, you know, that's not all there is. You know, there's more than that. And God has done so many things for us that we can be grateful for. And so in a time like this, it can be really easy to forget all of the good things that God has done, but all the good things that God continues to do for us, even in this time of being in a wilderness. So then Moses cries out to God. And, and so that's another point. We need to cry out to God. We need to cry out to God and say, God, what's going on? Show me. Here's what's happening. And then the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Now, a lot of the times when God is going to answer you, sometimes he's going to give you ideas that don't make any sense. They don't make his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So he's going to give us ideas and He's going to give us solutions that do not at the very get-go seem like things that we would come up with. But we have to know that if we're going to talk to God, if we're going to trust God, we have to trust that if God tells us to do something, he's going to, it has a solution. He's not just going to tell us to do something for no reason. And so Moses uh, throws the wood into the water and the water becomes sweet. And so here's the, one of the things to... Here's one of the things to keep in mind is that sometimes in the desert we are going to find water but we're not going to like it because it's undrinkable. So there's things in our lives that are going on in this pandemic that we don't like that are things that you know we they kind of meet the need but it's not really what we want. It's not really a good fit and 
you know, we're crying out to God and God's going to show us a solution and, you know, it's going to have a shift. So anything that God tells us to do when we cry out to him is going to be, is going to make something sweet. It's going to be for our good, but it doesn't end there. So God's not just about meeting your immediate short-term needs. So this is what he's doing in the Bible here. He's like, he's like, yes, I see you have water. Yes, I see that you have a need to drink. Yes, I see you're in the desert. So he's not just going to stop there. He is going to take it further because he wants you to remember what is happening. It's not just about getting your, your immediate needs yet. He's your, he wants to grow you up from being a baby, to grow you up to being an adult, an adult that's spiritually mature. So we don't want to be spiritual babies. We want to be... Uh, spiritual adults but sometimes when, when we go through when we go through crisis when we go through wilderness periods we find out that we're not as grown as we thought we were there the lord made a decree and a law for them and he tested them and so if if you listen to the lord if you listen carefully so some we talk to talk about the promises of god a lot and we say well you know god's word does not return void but we also have to look at there's different types of promises that god can make and some of the promises of god are conditional which means if if we don't partner with god god is like well you know it was conditional so you got to do your part um, and sometimes some of those, we need to look at, see, like, what, what, what are we saying that God has promised to do? And so I'm going to share with you some of the things that God, um, gave to me. Um, I encourage you to get in the word, test these things for yourself, pray about them, ask God to confirm them for you. Conditional promises are invitations to partner with God. And so when we go back to this verse, verse 26, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, what does it mean to listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God? And so I asked God this, and he drew me to Psalm 119, 119, sorry guys, 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So how can you hide his word in your heart? You need to be in the word. You need to be reading the Bible. You need to know what he says. How can you listen carefully to the voice, his voice, if you don't spend time with him unless you know what he cares about? And so one of the best ways to do that is to get in the word, and he'll start talking to you through the word, in the word. Um, it's great. Then I asked him, how do we hide our your word in our heart? He took me to Isaiah 28, 10, for it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, a here a little, there a little. And so that means like we have to just memorize the word. We need to pay attention to each line, each idea, eat a little bit here, a little bit there. We need to start building ourselves up in the Lord. Then he says, do what is right in his eyes. So what does it look like to do, do right in God's eyes? And so we have to be in the word to know what God says. Because if we are doing things that do not align with the word of God, that do not align with the will of God, then guess what's going to happen? It could affect our salvation. It could affect our walk with God, our intimacy with God to the point where Jesus says in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. So we need to be in the word to know what the will is because if we don't know what the will is, we could be saying Jesus, 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 Jesus all day long. And guess what? When the time comes, Jesus is going to be like, I never knew you. And personally, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen for you. I want you to have a great relationship with Jesus. I want you to know what the word says. I want you to be able to trust God in the time of pandemic. I want you to know that even though we are in a public health wilderness right now, we need to stand firm on the word of God. And also it says, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all of his decrees, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So there we know that there's something about following God. There's something about the promises of God. There's something about who God is. That if we pay attention to what he's saying to us, if we allow him to convict us, if we allow him to show us who we are, we allow him to show us there are shortcomings, our strengths, and we allow him to retell us the narrative of how he made us. We can know that he will heal us. And there's so many different ways for healing to happen. Healing can be physical, it can be emotional, it can be spiritual. There's lots of different ways for us to get infected and diseased. It's not just, you know, coronavirus that can make us sick. It's pride, rejection, lust, unforgiveness. There's so many other things. Um... 
so many other things that God wants to heal us from. And so we're coming up on 10 minutes. God bless you guys. I pray that you get in the word of God. I pray that you were encouraged. And I pray that the blood of Jesus covers you and keeps you and your family safe throughout this season and leads you into the good things that he has for you because he is your healer and he loves you very much.